professional football, what's become America's sport. Now, the show seems spectacular, but the hits more violent than ever. And now the NFL must confront a most serious issue, the possible correlation between football and brain damage. Two award-winning journalists allege that the NFL waged a two-decades-long campaign to help cover up any potential link. And they have written a book. It's called League of Denial, the NFL Concussions and the Battle for Truth, and produced a documentary for Frontline. Take a look. At what price glory, the Hall of Fame center Mike Webster died at the age of 50 after years of combat on the field. Legendary NFL center Mike Webster, one of the best to ever play his position, died in 2002 after suffering for years with dementia and depression, disorders that can be associated with repeated head trauma. He had heart disease and brain damage. After his death, Webster would become the first NFL player diagnosed with the neurological disease chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. I would have great objection to this claim. And since 2005, Dr. Anne McKee, one of the nation's leading neuropathologists, has studied the brains of 46 former NFL players. She spoke with the Fainaru brothers and PBS's Frontline about her findings. We have an enormously high hit rate. That would be extraordinary with any other disease to be able to pull in that many cases just that were suspected. So I think the incidence and prevalence have to be a lot higher than, than people realize. To her, it may be the beginnings of an epidemic. I think it's going to be a shockingly high percentage. I'm really wondering where this stops. I'm really wondering on some level if every single football player doesn't have this. The numbers then and now, they are striking. There's 54 brains of former NFL players that have been studying. Of those 54, 52 have been diagnosed with this disease, CTE. While the evidence is relatively new, the controversy is not. The league just settled a class action suit with thousands of former players agreeing to pay $765 million in medical benefits and injury compensation to retired players without admitting any liability. Our thought was let's go into this and try and figure out what did the league know, when did it know it, and to what extent did it, did it try to bury science. In 1994, then NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabu created the Mild Brain Traumatic Injury Committee. That committee became the vehicle by which the NFL denied the, the significance of the issue for the next 16 years. In 2007, the NFL held a meeting in Chicago where new commissioner Roger Goodell, having taken over for Tagliabu, spoke on the matter, captured on tape in the new Frontline documentary. The evidence is that our doctors are making excellent decisions. That's proven by the six-year study that we have and the research that's been done that in, uh, looks at that issue uh, intensively. The head of Goodell's concussion committee, Dr. Ira Kasson, took on the critics. Anecdotes do not make scientifically valid evidence. I'm a man of science. I believe in empirically determined, scientifically valid data, and that is not scientifically valid data. Kasson insisted there was no evidence that football players were at risk for CTE. In my opinion, the only scientifically valid evidence of a chronic encephalopathy in athletes is in boxers and in some steeplechase jockeys. Nevertheless, in 2009, the NFL invited Dr. McKee to present her findings before the Mild Traumatic Brain Injury Committee in New York, an invitation McKee relished. She's bringing pieces of brain into the NFL offices and having the NFL's Mild Traumatic Brain Injury Committee look at these brains and examine them for themselves and think about what the implications of this are. And they're basically just shredding her work, telling her that she's wrong, not really even considering it. There's a comparison to the NFL uh, to big tobacco. Why? The NFL creates effectively this scientific body, which, which some would suggest in some ways, you know, there's one argument that they cherry pick a bunch of data to sort of cook the books on whether concussions are really serious. Um, and then there's a massive attack on those independent scientists who are suggesting clearly that there's a connection between football and long-term brain damage. Now, in a statement to ABC News, the NFL said that it has made, and I do quote, a profound commitment to the health and safety of its players, end quote. Also, that, and I quote, the results have been both meaningful and measurable. We will not waver in our long-term commitment to a better and safer game at all levels, end quote. Certainly a discussion 
that has just begun.